Hi, I'm Cody Alexander with Match Quarters. Welcome to another episode of The Art of X Show. Today, we're talking about bracket concepts as we go through our summer series on coverage. Bracket is a concept that you're seeing more and more at the higher levels. It's really big at the college level. I would say that it hasn't necessarily hit the high school level yet. That's not saying there aren't high school coaches out there that are running this, but it is one of those things that a lot of teams at the high school level want to play with a larger hybrid as their nickel and so therefore you just don't see a lot of bracket concepts so what is essentially a bracket concept typically what we are going to do in a bracket concept is play a quarters type of coverage so we are switching essentially quarters instead of the nickel being inside leverage, he's now outside leverage. Instead of the safety being the cap defender, we're now transitioning that to the nickel, and now the safety is going to play the apex. So what we've essentially done is we've switched who is our apex player. The nickel now is completely out of the fit. He is a coverage first defender. Now the safety is moving into more of an apex, and he is now going to be in charge of the force. This is why typically when you talk to people that run bracket and they base out of bracket, they will tell you, you need to be running this from an over front and make sure that three tech and that five tech are set to the nickel. What that does is it's the same kind of argument you have when you play a team or when you play a formation that is three by one trips. You want to set the wall opposite so that way your safety who's coming from the table has time to get down. So when you're playing bracket, it's that same kind of concept, but you're playing it to two receivers. Now, the slot has become a major player in a lot of these offenses. And so because of that, and, the, and then the RPOs off of that, it was first the outs, right? You had a fade out. You were getting the bubbles. You were getting screens. Those were the things that you were getting. To counter that, you do leverage. So you create a simple leverage read to kill those. So what do you do? You transition it to an outside. Well, how do you switch your coverage? How do you stay, maintain that? You get brown bracket so now we have two dbs focused on the slot receiver we still have three over two the corner is going to be meg on number one and this also stems from the old school robber concept that was really popular in the 90s where the nickel cuts the flat the safety plays a buzz technique on the slot working inside out and then your corner is kind of that overlap player what this does is this is the man match version so the corner is going to play man on one we're going to get the nickel who's going to have all of number two up and out and it is a scooch technique so this is an inch a scooch a kick step however you want to define that you will see some teams actually press the corner it will be a soft press especially if those slots are, are closer to the line of scrimmage you will see those guys actually get close um, even in even in bracket if you get a, a the slot on the ball you're going to see press so there are are different ways of doing this um, your corner is going to play Meg press uh, he's going to be all in charge of number one so man everywhere he goes any kind of bubble Nichols got it any kind of out route Nichols got it any kind of slot fade Nichols got it any kind of post route he wants to lay on top of that the safety is really there um, he's going to take all of number two in. So the transition of a lot of modern offenses has now gone from instead of using bubbles and switch screens outside to now transition into slants into these little option option routes, snag option routes to see if the nickel will push. And we'll talk about that in a second or these thin routes, right? Five and in, and they kind of just roll in. Well, how do you counter that? That safety is now going to nail down on anything. So we get a slant safety's going to nail down on it we get a fin route safety's going to nail down on it so where you particularly see offenses take advantage of this is in those slant routes and really what do you do when you get outside leverage by the slot defender you're going to play those slants and that's usually where you're going to get that nice little window there for your quarterback what this does is it gives the illusion of maybe we're going to play cover three but we're really not we're going to nail down on it we're playing quarters now 
bracket to me is the key that unlocks the modern defense, especially in modern coverages, especially if you are a rip Liz team and you want to get into quarters. In fact, a lot of these college systems that run a lot of this cover seven stuff, they're going to then also on top of that be rip Liz, right? They're coming from the same system. And so how do you marry these things to together to where we're not, going from one thing to the other. And we're also not giving those pre-snap reads. I've always been a huge believer in a static look pre-snap. Let all hell break loose post-snap. But every time that OC looks at a clip, every time that quarterback lines up to the ball, every time the OC in the box is look, is scanning the field looking for a tell, I want everything to look the same. And what this bracket alignment allows you to do is it really allows you to marry a lot of those cover or three schemes because now the nickel is outside now it changes a little bit of your personnel you have to really kind of play with a third corner or a coverage safety at that nickel spot because he's going to have to match up with the slot so primarily this is why i don't think high schools run bracket as much it is be a lot of a lot of high schools focus more on just regular meg quarters or get that nine man spacing right or they focus on cover two to get that again, get those overhangs quick flowing, cap everything, keep everything underneath and attack the attack the flats. When you have a third corner and you have a cover safety, you have a coverage defender. Now we can match up with the slot and now it opens up bracket for us. We do have to change the front a little bit. We're going to have to play a little bit more of an over front concept. And that's again, why I think, what is some of the things that we've seen at the college level? We've seen a transition from the tight front from about five years ago that was very, very dominant in a lot of these schemes to more of a four down front. How are, how are you going to manipulate coverage off of that? Bracket has become a huge part of that. Now, not saying that's the only coverage, but bracket has become a big part of that. Even if you're running um, odd spacing with the fronts, these reduction fronts that I talked about uh, in the spacing pod a couple of weeks ago have become really popular. You're still using your over front alignments and you're wearing down right that friction on that offensive line so if it's going to hit it's going to roll off the table late it's going to go horizontal it's going to take time it's going to buy that safety time to fit remember your run fits dictate the coverage and the coverage dictates the run fits they're they're symbiotic they they work together so a lot of times when you see bracket coverage you even if you're going to play some odd spacing you're going to get reduction front from an over front you're going to get four down alignments create Creating solid edges so that safety now is is kind of the crease player your nickels in the alley um, the biggest thing that you hear about what's one of the things that you can do to attack rip list and that's going to be a fast three so you're still going to have that concept come up when you play bracket and they're going to see how you're going to match up with that and typically from a normal alignment you're going to run your exact same rules that you would in rip liz you're going to have a match it or a zone it and normal normal splits hashing out no reduction we don't have a dirty we don't have a dirty stack between two and three we're going to be playing match it so the mic is going to push and he's going to be in charge of three the nickel isn't going to worry about any kind of flat push now if you get tight you can give a zone at call uh, and then now it plays a little bit more like robber with the nickel cutting to the flat the safety buzzing down and carrying carrying through and then the mic playing kind of that that three up but he's really not because we're playing quarter so the safeties would then try and cap cap that vertical at two uh, typically what are the routes that you're going to get when you see this slot fade tends to be a, a really big one they're going to try and get that nickel dug out and try and get outside le uh, outside leverage on him if the nickel stays outside leverage it turns into a skinny post and they're just going to try and nail nail that basically throw to green grass over top of that safety now what are the techniques for each one of these i've kind of gone through this but let's go before we 
before we move on. So the corner is going to play regular Meg press. I like a soft press uh, when you're doing this and you're all by yourself. Um, a bail technique could work, but again, you're going to you're going to get into trouble if you get a lot of underneath routes or that you get a double slant, things like that. Uh, so the corner is going to play Meg press on number one. That's an easiest way to do it. We're not going to have smash rules. We're not going to do anything like that. You have number one. I'm not worried about anything. Remember, bracket is an extension of four lock Meg quarters. We're just switching our apex player nickel is going to be outside eye he's going to have a scooch technique that's an inch technique that's a kick step it's catch mentality i need to be physical on number two because the safety is kind of he's our conflict player he's at 10 he's reading the mesh but if two goes vertical he's going to roll underneath of it he's not typically going to try and work to, you know two to one he's not a cap defender in this this is not you know a true uh where safety's got to stay on top so he's more of an underneath player your nickel is on top any kind of inside release let whether it's a slant whether it's a fin wrap he is going to nail down on it from depth and a lot of times that's where you're going to get the collision that's where you're going to get the ball getting punched out that's what you want that quarterback to see that open space throw that ball off that rpo and then really that safety is there to nail it and then again with that mike he's going to have to leverage the push of number three work through that window and then nail down and we call it a cough technique curl over flat so cough technique no cover zone under five those would be your techniques the safety in particular is really going to have to be a flat foot pop your feet read uh, if you see a lot of the teams that run this it's really kind of like they're just kind of popping their feet pop 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 and then they're reading that mesh if he sees anything kind of break in in his in his periphery that's when he's gonna that's when he's gonna nail down quarterback shoulder angle are really big on this um you could teach the safety technically to read read two um but i uh, you know kind of you already should be teaching a triangle read out of quarters anyway those zone eyes i need to be able to see two working into my peripheral while i'm looking at the mesh quarterback's not going to lie to you on a, on a pass and so again any kind of run fit pop those feet then i nail down on top of that on top of any kind of in route or i am i now become uh that 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 alley that crease to defender uh and to, and again going over how i label that outside of number one is outside between one and two is the alley and then between two and the tackle is the crease so that's crease alley outside and that's how you define the run fit so that is bracket once you've taught bracket you now can kind of introduce different things how does this work into a cover three well i've already got outside nickel already knows that he's number two out and up now the safety we're gonna we're gonna spin away let's say let's say it's two by two we're gonna spin weak regular ripple is now the bracket safety he's already in apex he's already in the post the other safety is going to sink down on number two and essentially play the same technique that the nickel's playing i think it's the easiest way to then transition from either i'm going from rip list to quarters or i'm going from quarters to rip list this is an easy transition for it because it doesn't change anything from the nickel you have a cheat side and you have a downside and we'll get into this in uh, in our next pod when i talk about simple ways of doing cover three and kind of going over the basics of cover three so this is bracket i think this is a really good tool if you are not running bracket this is something that i would explore in fall camp uh I, this is something that i would explore in the later stages of summer and try and see hey let's mix this in a little bit we're seeing a lot of these y off teams running rpos we're getting a lot more slants we're getting a lot more fin routes how can we combat some of this stuff where instead of my nickel always playing basketball you know i did this at life school and really what what happened was we I did it a little bit experimentally a little bit at Horn because I had such great DBs at Horn. I had five guys that would eventually be Division One athletes. So we wanted to experiment a little bit with bracket because we were seeing a ton of teams, especially at Rockwall and Rockwall Heath, that were running slant and fin route RPOs. So we wanted to, uh, to kind of explore that. And then we became a really big cover one team. So when I went to life school, we were, do, we were just really outmatched and I, I needed simple ways of doing things the other thing was i didn't have a true 
nickel, Sam, hybrid safety, hybrid linebacker. I didn't have that. I, we had literally two linebackers on the roster, two of them. That was it. And we made it a third kid. We, we had him attempt to play linebacker. Uh, and so we needed a way of kind of solving that coverage issue. And one of the things that I did was I had three decent corners. And so what I took was the the kind of the kid that could play a little bit more aggressively. He was a little bit more physical. I made him the nickel. And so what we were able to do was we can run sky and cloud, but eventually what we transitioned to was we're just going to play bracket. Uh, my One of my best uh, safeties coming down from the table down and, and fitting was my field safety. So I was like, why not just go ahead and let him do what he does best and let's play that. It also then transitioned for us into a simple way of playing cover one. Cause once we played cover one, we did it off a three by one or two by two. If it was two by two, the weak safety roll, rolled down and the field safety we already looked like we were in bracket. He would close the post. It was three by one. He would just sink down and then the backside safety would come. And so we buzz it or thumbs it. And again, I will go into detail on the match three stuff next week, but bracket. And that is kind of where I'm at. And that's why I'm kind of bouncing back and forth. Bracket is that key cog in modern coverage that allows you to transform from split field coverage to middle of the field field co close coverage very easily without giving a lot of tails to the the offense and if you are in a situation that you find yourself with a man i have a plethora of athletic debuts like i did at horn i couldn't have done that at midlothian the year prior in 2019 i there's no way i could have been able to run that we didn't have enough dbs and we didn't have enough of we did we just didn't that wasn't what we wanted we were in a run heavy district so now we transition to more of an rpo pass heavy district at horn I had all these DBs were playing a three high system, but how can we manipulate that in there and really kind of detach uh, some of the things that we were doing and, and really lean into the athleticism that we had playing more man match stuff. That's where we played a little bit more bracket against some of these RPO teams, especially the slant and the fin teams. And then when I got to life school, you know, I'm trying to run sky. I'm trying to run cloud. I'm trying to run quarters and we just didn't have any linebackers. I had three corners. I said, you know what? Why don't we just be, make it really simple? A lot of these kids had never played football uh, higher than the JV level. And it was kind of one of those where, you know, COVID, then they had with a really senior heavy. And so when I got there, we were a bunch of sophomores and juniors that had really never played. And so I needed a way to create very simple rules for them. And then as we build that nuance, and that was why we decided to go with bracket. So I think bracket is really, really easy uh, to teach. It's one, it, it, it's kind of a, a little bit of a cheat code if you've got athletic guys, because then you can just run bracket, right? Now, the sister to this is cone. So cone is outside, bracket is inside. Cone you typically do not see unless it is a by one formation. And it plays almost identical to the way that you would play bracket. The corner is going to be a little bit more aggressive because he's playing all of the fade. So it's an outside leverage. I'm going to press. I'm going to, I'm going to funnel you to the safety, but now you have a cone. And in fact, there are, how can you do this to, can you play cone? Cause I know this is going to come up. Can you play cone to a two receiver side? And the answer is yes. It plays a lot like seven switch. So that safety now is going to bracket the outside work to the apex of two two, two and one, make it look a little bit. My advice, if you're going to play cone to a two receivers, make it look like quarters and then post snap transition to now we're looking at, now it looks like we're playing outside. So it should look a little bit like your quarters concept, but the safety's working two to one instead of just on two, he's working through two to one looking for any kind of post route, any kind of dig route. If it's a fade, the corner is going to take all of it. So now you can get a little bit more of a bail concept out of that. But normally where you're going to see the cone concept is going to be to the buy one set. I get this asked all the time is how do you defend an X? How can I get split field coverage? Play cone. 
you already are going to you get the double, help them out. Uh, so, and I talked about this last week with the trips, and now we're going a little bit more in depth with it, is that corner is going to be outside leverage, soft press. You could even bail him, cheat to the fade route, because any kind of slant, any kind of post, any kind of dig, any kind of curl, any kind of inside stem that safety is going to nail down on it. And so how do the run fits come off of this? Because you're like, coach, you're wasting two guys on one. That doesn't sound right, especially to the boundary where if I'm getting attacked and and if you're if you're watching this on YouTube, I have I have a Y off formation. So how are we doing this? It turns into cloud force. So if I get an inside stem in a vertical, let's say they run a glance, they run a dig, they're running a post route, that corner is going to get in trail position and then he would fall off as cloud force. Uh, so you do have to be careful running cone because it is a man match concept you're going to have two guys with eyes on one that if you are getting a lot of run heavy stuff to the x you may be more inclined to run like a sky coverage or an inverted thumbs like a, a something where your safety is kind of sinking down into that slant window into that glance window corners playing all deep so he deep and inside so he doesn't get beat um, maybe that's a different one but if it's just like look we they've got an x over there we've got to find an answer for it this is a great way to do it all it does is it locks your will onto whoever number two is whether it's a tight end or whether it's the running back he then has to take him out because the corner again same thing with bracket three push we're matching it we're not zoning it if we wanted to zone it then we would just cloud it or we would sky it or we would invert it we would thumbs it so we would do some different things so you you have bracket and you have cone so if you go to some of these schools if you if you visit any of these colleges or you've talked to these coaches that they they base in bracket they will have a slot call and a, and then an outside receiver call and they will have a tag for each one so when you're there that's what those calls are for and they're letting you know and typically you can tell this by the leverage of the slot defender is he inside or outside and that should usually give you a tell. And in bracket, he's going to be outside. Uh, in cone, your corner is going to be outside. If you have a cone call to uh, a two-receiver side, it will look and feel a lot like quarters pre-snap and then post-snap. That safety is going to snap his eyes. I know teams that move their receiver around and you want to get, you want to play quarters, but you want to double one single, one particular guy. I'm not really worried about the other guy, but they move them around all the time. This is a great answer for that. And a great way to get a double is you just have a bracket call and you either bracket him as in the slot or you bracket them outside. And so if you're coming from the cover seven universe or you're familiar with that, again, the outside almost plays like a seven switch, whereas the inside plays just like bracket. It's the old school bracket. Uh, and again, if you're a big robber guy, hey, coach, I came from an old school 425. We already have robber in. Well, bracket is just the man match version of that. Uh, and you're eliminating the corner. Um, another another way uh, that I think is, is kind of ironic is that Probably the number one coverage at the high school level, I would assume, is special stubby or solo. But if you base in special stubby, you're already running a kind of pseudo bracket concept. The corner's taking number one. You're just eliminating three, and now the safety and the, and the nickel are only relating to two. And then the mic is just going to take three through. So you, you kind of have reduced it down a little bit and you can kind of, again, I'm a big believer in, in uh, kind of taking individual techniques and things and kind of making Frankenstein stuff out of it. And it helps the kids learn. It helps the kids. Hey, these interchangeable parts, right? Like, Hey, we do this in this set. So if you already run special study, you're halfway there. You just got to keep, you just got to move it over, move that number through receiver into the backfield and adjust it accordingly. Um, how do you play bracket into the boundary coach? I'm getting formation into the boundary. They put their stud at number two. How can I do this? I actually think that this is a really good way of playing it is that because we're now into the boundary, we know we're probably not going to get double verticals uh, quickly. Uh, it, it, the spacing's just not great. So again, we're playing the law of averages. 
you move your you move your guy outside and now he's playing more of a bang to buzz right he's going to bang on two and kind of just buzz outside so now that robber concept that old school robber concept we've talked about now we're kind of playing something similar to that whereas you can have that corner again take number one or he can bail uh and and, and transitioning quarters right it almost plays out a little like an, an aggressive quarters so the safety is going to still play the same kind of bracket concept it's going to be a 10 he's going to be flat foot he's reading the mesh to two the the overhang is going to be outside leverage and he's going to be really aggressive yes we're playing catch yes we're playing scooch to a field slot but there's a lot of space so we want to make sure that we don't get a vertical route what this also does is when you play this cap technique so you have you have bracket you have cone and you have cap is that the safety is still going to take the vertical of two, but we're really going to bang on him. We're not going to give him, if he goes vertical, we're going to be really aggressive. So the wheels actually, or the overhang is actually going to step to face that slot. I like this as well, especially if you're getting a lot of run formation in the boundary and they're running the ball at you. It really defines the fit for the safety quickly because once you move that guy outside the slot, that slot now has to decide who he's going to block. Is it the next man inside? So he's just going to bypass the nickel and he's going to go climb to the safety or is he in charge of the safety? A lot of times, if you just move the leverage, he'll just turn straight to that overhang and he'll block them, which really defines it for the safety. And now the safety fits into the crease. And so now you have an easy way of playing this. If you are a nickel over team and you say, coach, we base out of Brown bracket we're a nickel over team we go to the passing strength how can we keep our bracket rules without just automatically checking the quarters cap is a way to play it you can still play your bracket you could even call it bracket it's just a little bit more aggressive when you're into the boundary because of the space so that's that's how you would play that into the boundary now off of bracket, we have our trap coverages. So we're talking about bracket concepts and now our trap coverages because really a trap coverage is it, we're still manipulating the slot, right? We're reading the slot. And so I'm going to put this in kind of the same family. What are some different trap coverages that are really popular in split field quarter systems? Steel is probably the number one that you can find. Steel relates a lot back to your cone concept, except for you're taking that boundary safety and I'm moving him into the high hole in the middle field. So if I have a two week, the, the wheel's going to have to take him. And I'm just talking four down so that we get our seven man distribution. So whoever your overhang is weak, he's going to take two. Corner's going to take all of one. Your boundary safety is then going to slide into the middle of the field. And what that allows you to do is it really unlocks that field safety to now I don't have to dive down on anything i don't have to snake i don't have to uh nail down on an over route if you are playing a bunch of y cross teams and and for i'm telling you there's whole teams that all they do is run different variations of y cross it's like the only play that they run offensive coordinators talk about it in the offseason all the time it's like well you know i ran y cross like 15 times in a row and the defense never figured it out if you are one of those teams if you're one of those defenses that are facing a team it's like all they do is different variations of y cross steel but you're a split field team steel gives you that concept it really fits almost it's Almost. It's the quarters version. I'll say this. It's the quarters version of weak rotation cross where you, or weak rotation buzz where you're putting the safety as a three up player and now you slide them in there. If you really get want to get really funky with it um, and you play like a travel technique with your boundary safety is make him stack right over top and then you can steal him you can steal him into the seam so you're stealing him wherever you're going so if let's say you're a big uh sam blitz team you like to blitz the edge you could use steel and he just replaces the blitzer now uh, you can do it in a regular coverage where he takes the high hole and then you man up backside again if you have a boundary corner you can do almost anything with that bound uh, boundary safety uh when i was in midlothian i had stud boundary corner we could do we could get really weird with that boundary safety and really put him wherever we wanted so again if you have a boundary corner that you're like for the most part you know maybe there's one or two teams that has a stud guy that you're like eh, i don't know i want to make sure he has help but if you're playing a team and you're like that my guy's better than your guy 
then go ahead and use that steel rotation and put him in there. We want to see a wide cross. We want to see double posts. That's what you want to see. So that's where that steel coverage comes from. So you can also use this off of this. You can use different ways of telling your safety where to go. Um, stab, send the safety to the B gap. Swipe is kind of like a thumbs, but it's more aggressive. I'm not going, I'm not coming down. I'm, I'm going to cut underneath the number one. Uh, steel is a great one to the middle hole. And then I call it scale, which means we're going to cap number one. So think of cone, but we're playing it more like two man. Uh, so I like a two man call into the boundary sometimes when you know, like, Hey, I really want my, my overhang can handle too. I really want to control number one and i want it to be more mannish i don't want it to be cone i don't want there to be a read i want it to be look we are doubling this guy that's where that's that's where that scale comes from corner traps off of that uh starting inside out a uh, slice i call it slice it's just you put that corner in the apex of one and the end man on line scrimmage and you tell that corner decide whether i'm blitzing or not and it, the first time teams see it, they'll freak out. So that if they're a big hitch uh, RPO team or like a check with me and they'll throw the hitch versus soft coverage, give them a slice tag because they, they'll they have to figure out, can I throw over that guy? What does all that mean? And then the next time blitz them and play cat and mouse games with them. I like slice technique, especially it's a good answer. If you have a physical corner on the boundary and you have a safety that can handle the X on a vertical route, uh, it's a pretty good coverage defender. Uh, doing the slice technique to a two by one set and just kind of putting them there and say, are you going to run? Because your tackles and your your tight ends are they're not taught to block corners in that sense uh, now if they're a big pin pole team things like that maybe they're looking for first man outside but a lot of times you put a corner there i've seen it where guys will just bypass them they don't even block them and then you're, the corner's sitting there and he just makes the tackle in the backfield because nobody blocked them uh trap is a hard step so it's i'm making i'm giving the illusion of two read palms i'm going to step aggressively down towards the slot, towards the mesh, you know, maybe do one, two steps, a sync technique like we teach the safeties. If I don't get anything out or I get a vertical by two, I'm going to hinge and climb underneath the number one. Again, syncing with them at squat technique, syncing with the vertical at number one, only coming down if we get attacked to the flat or the ball brings me down. A sight read is really just a flat foot. It's not aggressive. So again, you have these ultra aggressive, you have an aggressive, then you have kind of this passive way of doing it. Uh, sight read is just a flat foot at five. He's basically playing country two. If he gets something to the flat, he nails it down. If not, he's just going to try and get in front of the, of the, of the number one receiver and then just kind of kind of feather out but he's playing it country and then obviously you have cloud and then catch i like it this is kind of like that uh dog technique or the the cougar technique that you see in the saving system where they hinge down and they're going to catch the receiver force them outside this is what we play when we play two man so those are your safety traps and then the different spokes that you can have from split field coverage and then your cornerback traps off of that. So I know this episode was a little bit shorter than, than the other ones, but we talked about bracket. We talked about trap coverages. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe to the sub stack. All the links are provided uh, below. Uh, again, thank you for joining me. And again, subscribe, like, share this out. Let's help grow match quarters. Thank you.